question at the back. Can you hear me? Oh. <laughs> in the front. Can you hear me? Because <laughs> that's important. Now, don't to the side. Let's get the parish notices out of the way before we get on with the main thing. That is the emergency exits there, there, another one at the back. We're not going to need them because the whole place is a no smoking area, so they're not going to be a fire. Right? Phones are for silence, and if you want a really peaceful week, don't switch them on again. <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got to have a cough. <coughs> sorry about that. Um, where was I now? Oh, yes, I know the interval. The interval. There will be refreshments in the interval. Uh, proceeds to face, fundraising and albanaires, caring for everybody. Good charity, done a lot of good all over the place. But please, don't bring it into the auditorium. Drink your drink outside. Please, I'm asking really nicely, please, don't bring it in. Now, that's the parish notices out of the way. What's this all about then? This is about an amateur dramatic, dramatic group who are putting on a play, written by one of their number, in the village hall. Pretty much like this, really. But, up to that point, it's quite sort of normal. All the trials, the tribulations, the difficulties that go with getting a play on the road. A bit like a swan, really. You know, nice and serene <coughs> in front of curtains. Whoa, organised chaos behind. And then, the council decide they're going to pull the hall down with three days' notice. Oh my god! <coughs> Looks like the swan is going to turn into a dead duck, no matter how hard it paddles. So now, sit back, enjoy Curtain Up by Adam Croft, as interpreted by the Lovies. Thank you very much. Cynthia, 
She saw her as strong and motivated. Oh, she wasn't meant to be. And it's all interpretation. I suppose so, yes. Oh, Victor, welcome. Thanks, hi. Grab a chair. The other shouldn't be too long. Well. No, it's all Luke parking his car quickly, noisily. Oh, he needs to watch that and then service the car park. There's only been loose chickens, apparently. We don't want them coming through the windows, do we? Certainly not. Victor will be playing Dick. Oh, it's great. Evening all. Hi, Lou. Hello. Come on, Lou. First time for everything. Oh, I think. Didn't realise there was a grumpy old bugger in this one. Must have misread the script. <laughs> Did you see any of the others outside? Wasn't looking. Who else is in it? Oh, I've got a list, but I'll go through it when everyone's here. How many are we waiting for? Well, there should be seven of us, five cast, plus me and Rodney. Shall I put some chairs out then? Please. Hi. Sorry, traffic was awful. Oh, it's okay, you're not late. Oh, you're in this one too, are you? Good stuff, be good to see more of you. I think we saw enough of her in the last one. Oh, I don't think we can ever see enough of Juliet. I still say that camisole was at least a size too small. And I still say that was rude. It's not rude, it's a fact. Right, shall we sit down? We're just waiting for two more. Who do we still need? Well, Hetty Barnum, but she'll be late, she always is. And Leslie DeVere. Who? Um, she was in the she the part of Cynthia, but she's very good and um, apparently very experienced. You mean the crossroads back in the early 80s? That wouldn't be that woman I saw sat outside in the jack, would it? I don't know. What did she look like? Odd. <laughs> and knocked on the window, asked if she was alright, wasn't she? Maybe she was lost or something. She just wound her window down and said, I don't do direct arrivals. I just presumed she was mad. <laughs> I think that sounds like her. I better go and grab her. Doesn't do direct arrivals. What is she, a pilot? <laughs> Have you been there, Jules? It's Juliet. I'm fine, thanks. Well, I think Jules suits you better. I don't. So this is your play, then? Yep. Very exciting. <coughs> All a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest. Well, you've reached the dizzy heights of Jerry Stone Village Hall. And how many plays have you written? I'm working on one. Yeah, keep working. <coughs> Everyone, this is Leslie to be <coughs> she'll be playing the part of Cynthia. <laughs> right. We're still waiting on Hetty, but I think it's best that we crack on. Uh, I think we should start by introducing ourselves. I'll start. I'm Maria Kilburn, and I will be directing the show. This is Rodney Ashington. And he wrote the play and will be helping us out with rehearsals. Co-directing. Assisting. Do we need to? Most of us already know each other. Oh, it's tradition. Hi, I'm Victor Sykes playing Dick. Luke Hunter playing Tony. Juliet Francis playing Lola. And I'm Leslie Dupree and I'll be playing the part of Cynthia's father. And Hetty Barnum, when she gets here, will <coughs> be playing the part of Mildred. Now, has everybody got a script? Okay. Well, I think it's best that we just do a read-through first of all. I'll read in for Hetty. So, scene one opens in the garden <coughs> at Cynthia's house. She is busy pruning the clematis. Mildred enters from the house with a glass of orange juice and... Nice timing! <laughs> Sorry I'm late, everybody. I brought cake. Oh, is it here? I'll go up later. No, no, can we wait to the end of the first act? We'll do cake and coffee then. I'll we'll take two sets. Coffee, that's a good idea. No, can we just... Oh, <laughs> dear. Like herding cats. Tell me about it. We'll never be finished by ten at this rate. Good idea. Oh, they won't listen to you. They don't even listen to me. Yeah, Vic, make yourself useful. <coughs> Help yourself, folks. I'll get you a piece, Hetty. No, it's all right, dear. I'll be fine. Well, there's a ringing endorsement. I'll do it on the beer all night. What is it, Victoria's Spanish? No, dear, it's chocolate. Not very brown, is it? It's white chocolate. Mm -hmm. yeah. White chocolate and technically chocolate. But it doesn't have any cocoa solids. I get a tour of the Cadbury's factory one of them. <coughs> it's just very good. Why is it never very good? Right, shall we get on? Oh, I'm sorry, this pot's dirty. I shall have to give you another one. Oh, 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 oh that was close. Coffee for here, and then do you and sugar? I don't recognise her off crossroads. You wouldn't. You probably weren't even born. Wasn't she the one who had the test to be? Not Chelsea. No, her character, I mean. I think that was the thing. That's her. Didn't she play her? I don't think so. It doesn't look like her. Oh. Right, is everyone 
in their cake. Well, that's better. I can't abide dirty forks. Yeah, Leslie, what was your character in Crossroads called? El Dorado, darling. <coughs> It's a bit of a strange name. It's the name of another soap, not Crossroads. Oh, I don't like to be about it a long time ago. Right, in which case, can we get on, please? Rodney, can you explain? Well, what the bus do you know? Well, I was nominated. Well, the show was. El Dorado won a bath bag. <coughs> no, no. Crossroads. Well, you weren't at Crossroads, you were in El Dorado. I know. Since when did Crossroads win a battle? <coughs> well, it was the British Soap Awards, actually. When? 2002. So, the soap you weren't even in won an award 20 years after you weren't in it. <laughs> well, can't remember the details. Right, in which case, can we get on? Rodney, can you explain a little bit about it? Oh, absolutely. Luke. You can do it seated, Rodney. Right, yes. <laughs> Strange relation to the play I wrote recently. My first play, actually. <coughs> the idea first came to me when I was watching a programme on the telly no, about I, a family of... No, no, I meant a rough idea of the plot. Set the scene. Right, yes, of course. What it should be, he considered the <coughs> matter. A young couple called Tony and Lola moved in next door, and the two men start to fall out of the world. Oh, yes, and Mildred lives in the vicinity too. That's the fun and comedy moments there. There's things they do when they're trying to pack things up over a meal. And Tony and Sister end up sleeping together. Too much for now. It's just a read through. We can work on. 
the characters more closely next time. Why is that got your lines for ages? It's not until page 25. Why do I need to be here? Yes! <laughs> well, this is meant to be a big part. It is! It's the biggest part in this play for a female of your age. It's the only part in this play for a female of your age. Now, can we please get on? So how about... Thanks, I let you go. Oh, oh it's all going rather well, isn't it? <laughs>
And in the West End. We're not in the bloody West End. We're not even in the West End of Jenny's floor. No, but it's all about the standard. It adds, adds an extra dimension to the performance. Makes it stand as lasted, isn't it, Juliet? You see the communist bloke in the wall. What? Stannis Lasky? Oh no, wait, no, it was the ice skater, wasn't it? The one who got a leg smashed in. Oh, no, he's... Oh God, let's just move on, shall we? <laughs> Where 
and we're back on the stage. Up stage left, Teddy. Oh. Is that a problem? Well, I don't really like up stage left. That's where you put the stage manager and it gets a bit drunk. Yes, we always thought the SM should be downstage. It really makes more sense to see what's going on. Fine. I'll move the stage manager. So you'll be coming on upstage left, Teddy. <coughs> Leslie, you're not actually needed tonight. It did say so on the schedule. Uh, yeah, so just put them in the kitchen. I think I might have um, yeah, fine. Well, passed in butter. Well, let me just sit down. Okay, so uh, now at this point, Cynthia has just stormed off after an argument with Dick. So, Victor, you will be quite annoyed and angry with her. Right! <laughs> Hetty? Yes, dear? This is where you come on, Hetty. Oh, is it? And, 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 and what, what scene is this? Act one, scene three. Yeah. And, and what page would that be? Page 19, Hattie. Are you sure, love? It's not on my page 19. The page numbers are all the same. I printed them myself. Look, this is your husband's business account. Where's your script? Blimey, that's a lot of money, doesn't it? It's the economy is getting better. So oh, this is getting ridiculous. Could we perhaps get on? Okay, yes, I'm sorry. But, uh, Eddie, use this spare script. Oh, thank you, dear. Right. And, um, where? Oh, page 15, is it? 19! Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, right, so, um, um, uh, uh, hang on. I was just wondering. <coughs> Do you actually think it's right that Mildred should come in at this point? I mean, do you think she's the sort of character who'd come out when she heard the argument? What do you think she'd say in all? Did you think it was a good idea when you wrote that she came in? Well, yeah. Well, let's leave it in then, shall we? We've got a lot of work to do. We can't go changing the script now. Who is Mildred? You, Hetty! Your character is called Mildred! And who's Mabel? There is no Mabel! Just the Mildred! Now can we please get on? That's you, my dear. I just know you need to shout! Jigs, dear, I heard you raise your <coughs>
know all about desires, don't you? Oh, yes. I know all about desires. This is where you kiss Lou. Okay, and we'll both sign the rehearsal, yeah? No, no, no. We need to do it now. The sooner we do it, the more comfortable it will be. Come on, son, a bloody kiss! On the cheek? No! A proper one. This is a moment of fiery, unwind passion. Not a peck on the cheek. So, let's go from, oh yes, I know all about desires. <laughs> oh yes, I know all about desires. Oh, that's my woman! <laughs> no, it's not, it's mine. Rodney, can you take charge for a moment? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Let's do that line again, shall we? Just now, I found Leslie in the kitchen, popping that purse in a handbag. What? She was nicking it. 
apparently not. She thought, that's what I thought, right? So I just looked at her, psyching her out, and she goes, Oh, I left my purse here the other night. I wondered where it was. And I just looked at her again, and she goes, Did you look inside it? And I was like, yeah, I just wanted to see who it belonged to, and so it belonged to Doris Trot. And I didn't realise there was a driving licence in there with a photo on. I just saw the name on the credit cards, but she didn't realise that. So she tells me not to tell anyone, but tells me that her real name is Doris Trot. This Leslie Debeer thing is just a stage show. Oh, for Christ, I did think it was a bit posh, but Doris Trot. Oh, well, she must be quite a whole lap down. Oh, shh, shh, I can be back. The tray was right there on the side, then. Well, I couldn't see it for the life of it. <clears throat> right, is everybody here? I've got something I want to say. We're still waiting for Rodney. Oh, yeah, no, we mentioned yesterday it's going to be like something to do with the wedding. Did he? He didn't mention it to me. Really needs to be here for this. Oh, well, I'm going to have to tell you something. Right, well, it seems that we had a bit of a problem. Last night during rehearsals, I received a phone call from the parish council. It seems that they've sold this land for redevelopment. They're going to be demolishing the village hall, and their words, not mine, are possibly relocating it. But they can't! <laughs> we went through all this last year. They were going to knock it down and turn it into a hub for disadvantaged children. But we managed to list the village hall as a community asset of cultural importance. They can't knock it down. It, it, it needs to be protected. I know. So what's changed? Waitrose have bought it. Oh, oh, lovely thing, rolls. <laughs> Hang on a minute! When Tesco's applied to build that supermarket on that derelict piece of waste ground on the Franklin Road, the whole village was up in arms about it. Most of you protested against it. Now, Waitrose wants to knock down our village hall and you're fine with it. Well, that was Tesco. This is different. It is Waitrose. Have you tried that big rolls? They're very nice. <laughs> They're knocking it down next week. Well, that's a bit soon, isn't it? Of a plus, sir. I will have a new waitrose by Easter. Oh, good point. Doesn't this matter to any of you? Well, we'll move to the new village hall, won't we? You said they were relocating it. I said they might relocate it. You know what these councils are like? Oh, my dad's on the council. Maybe he can have a word. No, it's too late. It's all gone through. The JCBs are going to be here next week. Is there no other option? No, none. They thought they were being helpful by giving us the fallback option of doing the show before the halls demolished. Well, that would give us four days to open night. Three? Christ. This is why I need you to fight this. I can't. I've got my hands full with this play already. I can't go starting a campaign to stop the demolition short of chaining myself to the railing. No, it's it it's called for that, dear. <laughs> oh, besides, it's too late. Contracts have been signed. We've been stitched up. Well, that means only one thing for it, doesn't it? And what's that? We're going to have to open in three days. <laughs> Are you serious? We'd have to re advertise the show, get in touch with everybody that's bought tickets, and tell them about the new date. Hmm, not entirely sure we've actually sold any tickets yet. <laughs> well, we've got reservations, that's good enough. No, you don't pay up, it isn't. Oh, people are good and honest around here. They'll pay up. Besides, we're nowhere near ready. We've got no set, we've got no lights, we've got no sound. I can't sit in the wings shouting ding dong when the bloody doorbell goes. There's plenty of time to get all that sorted out. Oh, come off of it. None of you even know <coughs> your lines. We can learn them. I mean, in this place, well, if he's anything, he'll be devastated if he doesn't know ahead. What other options do we have? You're right. We can't let this beat us. But this is going to take some serious work. I need you all to know that. I'm talking serious dedication. Blood, sweat, and tears. You got it. Okay, no let's go from the top then. Oh, it's so exciting. I'm going to try and do it without my sweat. <laughs> okay, 
you need to be upstage left here. Oh, they're already, that's good. So, Cynthia uh, is pruning the clematis, Mildred enters from the house with a glass of orange juice and says, Your Uncle Dennis called. He chopped the Queen's head off last week and he wants you to grab the jeans off. <laughs> Good evening, all. Did I miss that? <laughs> I was dreading telling you about the council's plans last night, but we've all been so supportive. I mean, dedicating yourself to a person during the daytime is just so that we're ready. I'm not going to lie, we need it. But still, it's heartwarming. Well, well I'm retired anyway, so it's no skin of mine. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure you've got a lot of important things to do between now and Friday. Oh, no. I live a very boring life. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it anyway. And the rest of you, you must have very understanding bosses. Well, I just told mine I was ill. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't you say your boss is coming to the show? She changed her tickets to you the night. Oh, yeah. I'll just throw in a few cops every now and then or something. <laughs> well, there's dedication. Uh, well, of course, for me, acting's my full-time job, so I'm only happy to contribute my expertise. <laughs> Maybe Doris Trot has a job. <laughs> Nothing private, Joe. No, I don't actually mean so. My agent said it'd be good to put on my CV. It shows that I'm a team player <laughs> and can perform well under pressure. <laughs> Have you got part-time jobs? No, I'm focusing on my energies on my dream. <laughs> oh, do we know if any agents are still coming now? The dates have changed. No, I don't. So none of you actually prioritise this play over anything. You were just going to sit around all week doing nothing anyway. <coughs> you should take a leap out of Victor's book. He's a senior manager at the job centre and has worked his way round that at extremely short notice to dedicate himself to this play between now and Friday. Actually, I didn't. I was made redundant. <laughs> <laughs> what? When? Three months ago. How on earth could you be made redundant from a bleeding job centre? <laughs> Because I was too good at my job, wasn't I? Got everyone back and work, and as a result, my job was redundant. <laughs> like riding instructors. What? I mean, they're in the same boat, aren't they? <laughs> and if they're good at their job, they lose the customers. They pass their tests, and then they don't need instructors anymore. I'm not sure it quite works. Or well, any kind of instructor, I suppose. Oh, I don't know. I've been doing Pilates for years. <coughs> oh, they take probably the same. Right, <coughs> enough. Let's just get on the bridge. shall we? Um, Maria, I was just wondering. Um, oh, I forgot about you. Where have you been? Um, in the corner. <laughs> yes, do you really think that... You, um, have you seen my highlighters anywhere? I have um, you see seen my yellow highlighters? No. I was wondering, do you really think we could be... No, why do I think I've left them at home? <laughs> Maria, should we really be going to ahead with this? What do you mean? The play. I mean, with only three days. It's going to be a bit tight, to say the least. Well, it'd be better just to leave it, so we have a new village hall. We might not have a new village hall. Oh. In fact, I'll put money on it. Once Waitrose is in, the council will be raking in so much money, there's no way they're going to subsidise a money pit like the village hall. But it's the hub of the community. Oh, they don't give a damn about things like that. They've just seen the pound signs. That reminds me. Actually, I meant to say earlier, I've got a cousin that's not far from here. He's a lawyer who specialises in these sorts of things. He managed to stop a council in Somerset turning a church into a brothel. Oh. A little bit more cut and dry than our situation, granted. <laughs> but we're speaking to him. Didn't you think about mentioning this before? Like last night, for example, or before now? I didn't really think of it, it only came to me a moment ago. Right, well, Victor, the council's made up their minds, the contracts have been signed, <coughs> and the bulldozers are going to be here within the days. Ah, but they're not here yet, are they? No harm befallen him. What's the worst that can happen? That paperwork means nothing if it was all done dishonestly. Well, fine, give him a ring. 
Okay, act one, scene one, <coughs> scripts down please, our prompt if need be. Right, everybody in place. Right, so Cynthia, clematis, Petty, orange juice, and go. Um, uh, uh, the Queen's uncle climbed the tree and Dick chopped his head off and <coughs> then his chainsaw. No! Your Uncle Dennis called to say he's found that chainsaw. He'll drop it off at the Queen's head in a week so Dick can chop that tree down. Well, I don't most of the words are right. It's just that one I struggle with. Yes, it is a fairly crucial line. It's the first line in the play. Well, I got most of the words. Yes, but if they're not in the right order, it just, well, it's not quite right, is it? <coughs> oh, I'll work on it. Please oh. do. Oh. What on earth is that? Oh. Rodney! Rodney, whatever's the matter? Oh, it's going to be a disaster. My new place, my pride and joy. And it's going to be a disaster. Oh, don't be oh, dumb! It's, it's not going to be a disaster at all. We've got three full days on this. Look, it looks a bit shaky, granted, but these things always come together at the last minute. We'll have an announcement before the show so the audience knows the challenges that we face. They'll understand. <coughs> Will they? Well, yes, I hope so. Besides, it always seems a world away when you're in a rehearsal room. So the set builders are nearly done. So we're going to get on the set <coughs> on set, but we'll all come together quickly after that. Darling, I'm going to be frightfully honest with you. I've done far bigger things than this in my past. Built up quite a reputation as a professional. And if I thought for one moment this play was going to be anything less than fantastic, I'd be out the door like a shot. Well, that's reassuring, isn't it? <coughs> Are you sure you wouldn't just trot off? Very <laughs> funny. <laughs> right, come I on. I heard that the other day. So you found out Leslie to be is my stage name. How new rarity in this business is it? It's Village Hall and Drap. I have this semi professional theatre. <laughs> that has made me dive to El Dorado, darling. Oh, so you keep telling us. Oh, come on, let's get on. Sorted. What is? My cousin's going to pop by later and get the SP. He reckons he's got an idea. Well, I'm not sure what he can do, but fine. Aren't lawyers expensive? Not this one. Oh, I'm talking that. He will charge us for his time, so it's easy to do civic duty, an act of community goodwill. Oh, good. Well, fingers crossed then. Do you know, Victor, I'm starting to feel a whole lot more positive about this whole thing. Between you and me, I think Really this off. Right, so where were we? Oh, coffee break, I think. Ooh, oh. I get the cake. <laughs> Tony told him he couldn't do it, and so that was that. Oh, it's amazing how they never listen, isn't it? Take Dick's mother, for instance. She knows I can't about sugar in my coffee, but she still does it. I swear she does it just to spite me. So I've started. Setting my alarm and getting downstairs before her, making myself. Speaking of it, you must be time for some more drinks now. I'll get them. Uh, Tony, can't you even help me? Sure. I really don't know how you put up with her. No, you <coughs> can't. All that stuff about your mother. Why does she just make her own bloody coffee? She does now. Oh, you know what I mean. Well, Cynthia, Cynthia, she's not happy unless she sees a conspiracy theory. She has to put these people sneaking about behind her back. What keeps her going is her fuel. To be fair to her, we are sneaking around behind her back. Yes, do it, do what they bloody love it. Yes, friends. What? And now, well, what if they come back? They've been a few minutes yet, chatting to each other, probably. You know, I'd sing these lines, she'd probably got their tongue wagging away at her. Besides, don't you want to be a slave? Well, of course I do. But what if they see? They can't, but they land buyers in the way. Best thing I ever did was not put that down. Quickly then. Uh, so it's with rubs. But do you think that Lola would give in so easily? I see her as being a stronger character, Taz. No. We're opening not much over 48 hours. We can't go changing the script now. Let's just run with it. 
Yeah, but it wouldn't be changing much, would it? She'd just have to say, no thanks, it's in my mouth. Uh, in my mind, that's a little yeah. I don't think that would really be true to the character. <coughs> oh, I agree. Damn right, you get a snog. So do I. Well, that's different. I'll oh, sniff him about him. Tony doesn't actually want to kiss Cynthia. Oh, I'm very sure he does. I did write it with the intent Oh, it's a pretty stupid play oh, anyway. Oh, Luke! I'm sorry, Rocky, you did me. I did. No, it's just that everyone's under a lot of pressure and tempers do fair. I really wouldn't take it personally. Oh, for Christ's sake, let's get on with it. Come here! Uh, hey! Uh, get your bloody hands off, Oh, right uh, dear. That's it, not you two! That's Sorry. enough! What the hell was that all about? <coughs> let's take five minutes, shall we? <coughs> Pick up on his leg. He's walking past 
Yeah, but there's 300 of them. How is he going to carry them? No, no, not my problem. Oh, good morning. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, it's all right, Julia. It's still early compared to some. Oh, who was still waiting for? Luke, Leslie, Rodney. Oh, hello, dear. Okay. Uh, um, I, there is a chocolate sponge in the kitchen. Are we um, not going on the stage? Later, hopefully, the set builders are just finishing off. Oh, that's exciting. It's amazing what they can do in the short space of time. Yes, we've been very lucky. Everyone's rallied round and everything's going to be fine, isn't it? Uh, Maria, right, come in and sit down. We've got a lot to get through today. Come on, now it's wrong me. What about it? Just found him set on the wall outside. He says the play's going to be a disaster. He's having a panic attack about it. He's calling it a crisis of confidence. He wants to call the whole thing off. Oh, for crying out loud. Can you go and speak to him? I think he trusts you. Oh, fine, I'll do that as well, <coughs> shall I? There's a bloke sat on your wall out there crying. You'll be telling him your jokes again, Pete. <laughs> oh, hi, Ray. Hi, come bearing an update. Okay, yes. Eddie? Hey, yes, dear. Could you go out and speak to Rodney? Talk him round if you can. I will try. Um, oh, maybe a slice of, of chocolate cake will do the trick. Okay, so what's the news? I think I've got an angle. At this stage, with all the contracts signed and everything ready to go, can't really go down the legal route. It's all been signed off, see? Which is where... A little gentle persuasion company. Oh God, what have you done? No, 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 nothing like that. You see, at this late stage in the game, you've got to make sure you've got your decision makers on board. Very few people who can stop a project at this late stage. No point firing in all directions. So what's the news? Right. You oh ready? yes, this should do the trick. Right. You remember I told I asked about the head of the local council planning committee, this Norman Liddy chap. Yes. Well I've compiled a little mini dossier to take to Mr. Woodley, which I think might just convince him to get the plan overturned. What kind of dossier? One that consists of evidence of financial and sexual misdemeanors. What? Yeah, including images of him being spanked by a dominatrix. <laughs> Norman Linney? Our Norman Linney? The committed Christian, Norman Linney? Well, it takes all sorts. Oh, Christ, how did you find that? How do you mean? Well, the pictures of him doing that, where did you find them? Find them? <laughs> No, I didn't find a love photo shot. What? <laughs> I've got some images of him off the local council website and some news articles about planning projects and put them on my computer where I've got some images. Well, let's just say I found some images on the internet. <laughs> please, please, tell me you are joking. You are going to fit up an honourable, decent Christian man who's dedicated his life to find it for good causes and expose him as some sort of deviant. Who said anything about exposing anyone? Photos don't need to go anywhere. All we need to do is threaten with that. Tell him, if we don't get the plan overturned to demolish the village all, then we'll release him. We won't, of course, but he don't need to know that. Oh, he'll never fall for that. He'll know damn well it's not him in the pictures. Cabra never lies, huh? Yes, but Photoshop bloody does. Look, we can't possibly do this. He's a good man. We'll ruin him. No, we won't. We'll just coerce him into changing his mind. We want the village hall to stay open, don't we? Yeah, but not because of some shady underhand coercion. And what do you think led the council to suddenly decide to demolish the village hall? If not, shady... Underhand coercion. He's got a point. No, I need time to think about this. We well, ain't got time. They're due to start rolling the JCBs in on Monday, and Lily's got to get time to hold off between now and then. Won't be much he can do over the weekend, so we've only got the rest of today or tomorrow to get it stopped. Is it really the only way? <laughs> I don't 
suppose we've got much choice then, have we? <laughs> oh God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Okay, fine, do it. Take the pictures to him. You know, I thought you might say that, so I dropped them round this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
Well, on the plus side, if we don't, not that other stuff's going to matter. Oh my god, it's going to be a disaster. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh. No, stop, oh. listen. Everyone in the village knows the troubles we've had and they're all behind us. We aren't going to be expecting much and they'll be totally forgiving of any mistakes or hiccups. They know what we've been through to get this show on and they back us to the hills. Well, it's only because they're getting a bloody waitrose out of here. That's irrelevant. The fact is we have them on side. If something goes wrong, so what? Things go wrong in place. No matter how much you prepare or try to mitigate against it, so let's just take our stride, deal with any problems that we crop up, and give us our best bloody shot, right? Oh, you're a good man, Victor. And so is your cousin, I hope. Oh yeah, he's golden. No problems there. No vices. Well, he smokes occasionally when he's had a drink. He wants to kick the dog in the face. But that was accidental. No, I meant the thing you said earlier about having Norman Linnae's ghoulies in a vice. Oh, that, yeah, that was a joke because we've had the vice. He's got a couple of claw hammers. Oh, God. I won't worry about it. I've got faith in the old boy. But Ray's got a bit of a reputation for his powers of persuasion when it comes to legal challenges. He used to say he could convince the sun not to come up in the morning. Well, if you convince Waitrose not to come up the M29, it'd be a good start. Right. We open in eight hours. Shall we get back with rehearsing or can I pass? <coughs> Uh, <coughs> problem with Rodney. What? He got his finger stuck in the toaster. How? I don't know. He mumbled something about pop tarts, but I couldn't understand him until he was crying. Oh God! Is the is the toaster plugged in? Oh, I think it is. No. No. no, no, leave him. Whilst he's attached to the wall, he's out of our way. It'll <laughs> take him the rest of the day to work out how to unplug it. <laughs> Right, it's everyone here because if so, I'll get them to open the doors. Oh, where's Heather? I specifically said the stage manager needs to be backstage for 7 p.m. Rodney, when you stop pacing, I've told you everything's going to be fine. There's nothing to be nervous about. You should be excited. I am excited. This is me excited. Maria, oh. <laughs> I'm still not sure about this scene six where Lola slaps Cynthia. You know, we've spoken about this. I know, but I'm just, I'm not some other person. I haven't got it with me. Can't I just pretend, you know, do like the stage slap thing where I slap my thigh at the same time? No, I'd really rather you didn't. Not at this late stage. They need a lot of practice or they look terrible. I said, how do you want me to do it? Maria, would you help me with this pullover? It's all punched up at the back. I said we should have got a larger size. Miss, but it's, it's all we could afford. Hold on the budget. You're worried about a slightly small jump patient trying to wear in these shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you are got to be alright. You said you got this to be... Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, does anyone know if any agents are in? No, I don't. I've had enough to do today without browsing audience lists. My mum's in. If she's not an agent or a casting director for Hollyoaks, I'm not interested. <laughs> Charming, show your true colours now. My ex-wife does all the castings for Doctor Who, actually. What? Are you serious? Yeah, she did for years. That's partially what broke us up. They're spending all their time away on set. She's done lots of characters. The Snowman, Tivoli, Silence, you name them, she's done them. Oh, well, I wouldn't give her a part on that. <coughs> but does she only do the monster? Oh, yeah, obviously. Do you think she'd be able to get me a part? I don't know, I doubt it. What's that meant to me? Well, do you want to be an actress, not a makeup artist? A makeup artist? I thought you said she did all the casting for Doctor Who. Yeah, the prosthetics. She does the cast for all the monsters' heads and things. <laughs> Is that where we got her from? Oh, will you be quiet? You're just getting my warm-ups. Warm-ups? This is the village all the way around the hall. Oh, performances need warm-ups. What book did you get that from? Out of bullshit your way into thinking you're a proper actress? Oh, what we all you like, sweetie. But I'll get further than she's ever got, gushing over agents like a slobbering puppy. How dare you talk that way about Juliet? I know for a fact she'll get further than you. You never got any further than El Dorado. Yeah, and I've already been to Tenerife, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you not be quiet and hear you arguing from the bar. Yeah, and I don't want any of the agents being put off after everything that's already happened. And 
household stats. Oh, will you give over? There are going to be any agents coming to see this, and not coming to see you. They weren't going to come anyway, regardless of what day the play was on. They don't come to village hall, piddling little shows filled with dullards, divas, and dimwits. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet, so uh, with regard to our earlier conversation, that is how I would like you to do the slap in the season. I think I can manage that. Well, if you do it a little more gently, it wouldn't mind. Now I've got to make it look realistic, oh, Doris. Where is Heather? We're going to go up in a few minutes. I just read last year. If she doesn't turn up, then I can do stage manager. Hetty, you're in the cast. Your Uncle 
Dennis's chopper is ready. <laughs> he is going to chainsaw the queen's head off with his dick. Let's go.